So there I was listening to a Lecrae song, Don't Get Bitter, Get Better. I was like, God, that's perfect. That's exactly the theme of this morning. Don't get bitter, get better. <laughs> so many stories in the past year have, have created in me an opportunity to get really bitter. And thankfully, uh, through patience, through spending time with the Lord, he has helped me get better through it. And we're jumping back into the Mosaic Law. You're like, oh, gosh, James, I don't, what, how can I use the Mosaic Law? How can I use the Old Testament? That would be the first problem. If you're not reading the Old Testament, if you're not studying the Old Testament, if you're not studying the entirety of the Bible, the story, and yes, the story is about Jesus, the story in its entirety is about Jesus. I get it, but you, you can't plug and play parts of the movie. You're not going to watch uh, Equalizer 3 and just watch the middle of it. you got to see the whole thing. I haven't seen that. I love Denzel Washington. Kind of want to see it. Anyway, it was just kind of an example for you to start to understand. Um, once you have the whole movie, the whole story in your arms, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul and you do it on a regular basis, you will then be able to grasp God's character better. You'll be able to grasp uh, Him better, and as a result, be transformed. Give Him glory and give others glory. The number nine thing we've learned, and there's ten of these things, but number nine is this. The Mosaic Law shows the efficacy of a substitutionary atonement. Efficacy, what does that mean? I had no idea, so I looked it up. The success of a substitutionary atonement. Why do they use efficacy? I don't know. It's pretty cool word. Word of the day. You're welcome. But th- this, tell- this told me that the sins of, of the guilty during that time uh, were-, were paid for by innocent blood. And it's a very graphic uh, process throughout the whole entire Old Testament. And, and, and extremely, extremely just graphic. And if there was no s- atonement, then blood atonement, then sins were not forgiven. So this had to happen. And then, uh, you know, Hebrews, Hebrews 9, 22 says that for us, under the law, without the shedding of the blood, there's, there's no forgiveness. So what does this mean for you and me? Well, the, the, the graphic display of Jesus, Jesus was not only innocent and earthly standards, but he was perfect by eternal standards and still shed his blood for you and me. That blood was shed for people he knew would throw it back in their face. And that's, that's powerful for me and you today because if we're not counting the costs of, of this innocent blood that was shed for you and me that people abuse still today, the, the unimaginable, unexplainable, unarticulatable uh, love for you and me, if we don't really process that on a daily basis, we have no backing or foundation or root or, or deep nutrition to our faith. The resurrection of Jesus and the power of his resurrection and the power of his love for you and me by shedding his blood and the hope of his glorification, him returning, is, is, is more powerful to our root system than we believe. And you wonder why when storms come, you get ripped up out of the ground. Pursue him today. That's a challenge. Pursue him today and count the costs of Jesus' sacrifice for you. Not saying like, oh, I can't believe he did that for me. Like, woe is me. I don't deserve it. Well, yes, all those things are true. But more so, making it about him and not you. Spend time counting the costs by thanking God today for sending his one and only son, Jesus Christ, for you and me to fulfill the law perfectly, to, to invite us into eternal space with him where every single day you and I get to pray to him, get to af- ask forgiveness for sins. We don't need animals anymore. And we get to step into the holies of holies where the presence of the Lord is. There is freedom.